So this is our COVID-19 employer response um, panel. We know that a lot of students have been coming to us with different questions about how their internships or how their future job prospects will be affected <clears throat> by the COVID-19 outbreak. And so we decided that it would be a good idea to assemble some of our employer partners and then some of the individuals who manage internships internally at UNT to try to share what information we do have with students. Um, again, we may not have answers to all the questions, but our, our, our major goal here is to let students know that there are resources here for them and there are people here that are, are trying to help and do their best to make the situation a little bit um, more manageable. And so this first slide, you can see some of the partners that we have here, uh, the UNT Mayborn School of Journalism, the College of Health and Public Service, the G. Brent Ryan College of Business, Service King Collision, Enterprise, Cintas, and Caliber Home Loans. And then we'll go through and introduce some of our individual panelists today. Yes, on the employer end, we're very excited to have Aaron Long from Caliber Home Loans. Hello. And we also, I'm sorry, we also have Sundance Brennan who is his colleague who should be able to add um, some extra insights into the conversation, but they are colleagues. Mm -hmm. Happy to chime in when I can. Great. And then we have Jade Veit from Enterprise Holdings. Thank you, Jade, for participating today. And Lakitria Luter from Service King Collision Repair Centers. And um, sorry, finally, Holly McDonough from Centos Corporation. And I should add that all four of these employers are on our Career Center Employer Advisory Board. So I think that's pretty telling um, on the commitment that they have to UNT and to our students. Um, they are very valued employers of ours. So we look forward to hearing all that they have to say today. And we have Jim Dale from the Mayborn School of Journalism. Thank you for participating today. Ron Timmons from Emergency Management and Disaster Science. And we do have April Kuykendall, who's a senior lecturer and graduate and undergraduate faculty advisor for the Department of Management in the G. Brent Ryan College of Business. Thank you to all of our panelists for being here and being willing to share their time with our students. And I guess we will kick it back to you, Amy, and we'll start going through some of these questions that our students uh, submitted to us through a, a survey that we put out. Sure. So welcome, everybody. Thank you so much to the students that are participating, the faculty and employers. This is certainly a crazy time for everybody. Just to let you know, it's absolutely crazy just for the staff of the Career Center. So know it's students and alum that it's not um, just crazy on your end. So everyone's dealing with this. But I did want to, when I came up with this idea, come up, get some optimistic highlights for you all, because you can kind of get sucked into media and, and have kind of a pessimistic view, but there are lots of employers that are still hiring. And you have lots of promise going forward as you enter your careers. But we do have a bunch of questions that came from our career ambassadors. Our career ambassadors are our student workers that are kind of the brand ambassadors for the Career Center. So they, when we can go to campus, they are often around campus promoting our events. They see students review resumes. So they're very helpful and they're kind of the face of the Career Center. So we did um, give a survey to them and then they came up with some questions for us that we thought would be good to ask these employers and campus partners. So I'll go ahead and get it kicked off. And like I said, I think it kind of, um, a lot of these toward the beginning are geared toward employers, but anyone feel free to jump in. But I'd like to hear from most of the employers on this, could you tell us what hiring looks like at this point in your company? Do we just jump in right in and just taking, yeah. taking it? Great. Okay. So this is Aaron from Caliber again. You, you know, thank you guys so much for having us, uh, Sundance and I, on the panel. It's an honor to be, uh, you know, to, to be able to chat with students and, and navigate some of these um, interesting questions. Um, uh, and we'll definitely weigh in where we can, right? Um, you know, I think um, specifically Caliber, and I can't, even, I can't really speak to the financial services sector as a whole, but, you know, I think looking at what the mortgage, our company is a mortgage business, right? A non-bank mortgage lender, um, we're one of the top uh, mortgage companies in the country. And we do, you know, we have a very diverse model. So, 
know, you'll take a look at what's happening in the economy with mortgages and servicing and individuals um, trying to make mortgage payments and things like that. It gets really interesting of what our company is, um, uh, you know, is, is doing. Um, so with that being said, I mean, our company has lots of opportunities. So hiring for us is ramped. Um, we have um, um, a very stable and diverse mortgage, uh, you know, business in the mortgage category and an otherwise volatile category. But, um, you know, I'll give you some examples. Like we have just ramped up our loss mitigation um, uh, channel. And so what that is, it's called it's call centers. So we have different pockets of call centers. My, you know, Sundance and I's uh, channel is more on the production side. So we're refinancing our customers' mortgages. And I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that and, and uh, you know, how um, um, significant that is with, um, you know, on the production side. But on the servicing side, on the other side of the mortgage business, you have call centers of individual, of, of, uh, of agents uh, reaching out to customers, borrowers in our portfolio who are struggling to make their payments. Um, so you're, you know, when you, when you look at the economy and what's going on and what's impacted, you know, there's all, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of the uh, individuals on the and expertise on this call are going to, are going to say, you're going to touch on this, but, you know, it really comes down to, to where the opportunity is within, um, you know, some of these challenges. And so poking around in those corners, I think is a good place to start if it's aligned with your job search, um, because those are the, those are where, you know, you're going to need talent where we're ramping up. And so with our business, there's, there's quite a bit of opportunity um, in those, those, those agent roles that are reaching out, helping customers, reaching out, refinancing customers. So the mortgage business has some pockets of, of opportunity. Great, thank you. Um, this is Lakitria. I'll go next. Um, hi, uh, Lakitria with Service King. Um, so we're, we're definitely considered an essential uh, business. So we have remained um, open, which I'm really excited about that. Uh, we have over 300 plus locations um, nationwide uh, throughout uh, throughout the um, uh, throughout our service king or um, uh, portfolio, but uh, you know some of the things that we've done to 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 really ensure that we're continuing to focus on hiring uh, students and and other folks is that uh, we we started streamlining um, a lot of our processes, um, centralizing before COVID-19 even happened, which is, which for us has been a, a good thing. Um, you know, I think uh, Aaron had mentioned it too. Uh, you know, we have our, our, our call center support. Um, that is huge right now. Um, and I think the, the cool thing about Service King is that we're super flexible and adaptable. A lot of our teams, uh, especially in the management or leadership side, are working from home. Our call center support teams are working from home. So uh, we've created kind of an, a, a space to where we are still being effective um, and productive. And uh, we're actually trending ahead of the industry as far as our business sales. So um, that's another uh, good thing that, that we actually heard from our CEO just a couple of days ago. So I would say for, for students that uh, may be looking or trying to figure out, you know, what's the best options, um, I would definitely see um, just kind of uh, search the markets to see where the needs are. Um, you know, like I said, what is considered uh, an essential uh, business need right now? And a lot of these companies are working uh, or allowing their uh, employees to work virtually. Um, we, we have meetings all the time that are virtual, team meetings that are virtual. So I, I wouldn't be too, too worried about not being able to find a job. It's truly making sure that you know what you're looking for and what you want. I think that's the big thing because at this point, all companies are having to make adjustments. There's not a company that's on this panel or, or, or companies uh, throughout um, Texas that haven't had to make adjustments to maintain to maintain the businesses. And that includes being able to work from uh, work from home or work remote. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And hi, everyone. My name's Jade. I'm happy to, to be joining you today. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Amy. Um, I think as employers, we can um, gain just as much by learning from each other and, you know, learning from you all on campus as we can hopefully contribute. So thank you again. Um, as you can imagine, enterprise being in the travel industry has been um, heavily impacted by the pandemic. So um, as many of you are fantastic supporters of us on campus there, 
We obviously hire a ton of UNT students every year, so hopefully most of you are familiar with our management training program. Um, but as you can imagine, really, you know, again, we've got three prongs of our business. One is travel, it's personal travel, which is non-existent right now. Um, another prong is corporate travel, which is non-existent right now. And then our third prong is replacement for um, partners like Service King. Um, and, you know, <laughs> um, who, yes, there are some accidents happening, but very few because most people are staying home right now. Um, so really, the majority of our business has been temporarily just quiet. So a lot of our branches we've um, just temporarily shut for really the protection of our employees because as you all know, we have high volumes of customer interaction typically on a day-to-day -day basis. So to protect our customers and our employees, we've temporarily closed a lot of our doors and kind of centralized into some main locations and high volume areas. And our business, as you are familiar with, is typically enterprise will pick you up. Um, but in order to maintain safety purposes, again, for our customers and our employees, we're moving to a delivery and collection process. So we're picking cars up at our customers' homes. We're delivering cars to our customers' homes if they're in need of it or to our accounts and partners, again, like Service King, body shops, dealerships across the country. So. This has heavily impacted our business. Um, we definitely have taken a pause on hiring right now, um, but it is certainly temporary. And, you know, obviously we are trying to stay very close to the stay at home orders, um, which are different. Obviously, we operate in all 50 states. We actually operate in 98 countries. So it's different in every different, you know, pocket. Um, and so our business is having to stay very, very close to that. Luckily, we have a decentralized structure. So we have, you know, one of our headquarters is right here in DFW. So all of us on the leadership team for our group, um, you know, much like all of you are working from home and working virtually where we can. Um, we have call centers of employees. They are working virtually. Our accounting teams can work virtually. So really, it's just our management trainees, our branch managers, our assistant managers, our area managers still have to stay on the ground in our operations and they're taking the proper steps and procedures to keep themselves and our customers safe. Um, like I said, temporarily we're on a, a freeze from hiring because um, we're, we're just trying to keep everyone safe at this point um, and we've had to make some you know restructurings of our team. So I think towards the middle of the summer and hopefully end of the summer as we start to ramp back up we will be doing hiring. Uh, we'll probably be doing some really aggressive hiring and so you know as we're, I'm speaking to students and and you know they always ask those questions like what, what do we have to look forward to? Um, I think a lot you know I think hopefully the worst is behind us. Hopefully the um, you know the, the dire amount of cuts and changes that businesses have made happened in March and April um, and hopefully May starts the recovery for everyone and this hopefully is a perfect time for them to be entering the workforce although I can believe it is very scary but hopefully it's a it's a good time because hopefully there will be a lot of opportunity. Great thank you. Holly do you have any thoughts? Yeah, so at, at Cintas Corporation, we are an essential business because we are making sure all of the other essential businesses have the safety supplies, the hygiene products, sanitation products ready so they can service their customers. So we're still we'll, we're still trucking along. You know, we have had a little hit in the hospitality industry, like Enterprise, the Hertz, the Marriotts, the hotels, and the restaurants. However, we're able to shift our, our model to focus on healthcare and technology and, and the things that, um, and the industries that are currently open. So we are, we are actively hiring for our management trainee program. We uh, saw back in 08, 09 uh, recession that we halted hiring, every hiring, all hiring. And then three to four years later, we were growing at such a massive rate that we were lacking in leadership talent. So our leadership team has advised all of our campus uh, talent acquisition managers to keep the steam rolling on hiring as many management trainees as possible. So we're still looking for fantastic candidates to join our leadership development program all across the country. So we're going from California to Florida to the New York area and, and definitely here in Texas. So thankfully, you know, I can still say that we are really, actively recruiting for full-time positions 
we are not hiring for interns. We've already filled a majority of our, our position. So we're, we're having them come in for a, a, a shortened internship. We unfortunately can't go virtual with a lot of our customer service type roles. So um, it's going to be just a shortened internship. But um, so right now we're only focusing on those full time management training positions. Great. Thank you. I'm going to try to gauge the time here, but I thought this was kind of a telling question. How are you helping your employees during this pandemic? So I think not only do students want to get hired, they want to work at a great place that's going to support them during this time. Do, do a couple of y'all have any thoughts? Yes, um, this is Lakeitra with Service King. So a, a couple of things that we, we've been doing. Um, number one, for our, our teammates that are still working in the shops, uh, we have um, created safety um, measures and protocols uh, to help support them. Uh, there's also training for them uh, that they're going through and doing. It's obviously mandatory because we want to make sure that they stay safe. Uh, we even have what we call um, a, a curbside, um, uh, kind of like touchless uh, check-in um, type of thing. So the customers don't physically have to come into the shop. Uh, so we're doing things again to protect them. Uh, another thing that we're doing, we have what we call the President's Fund. And that's a, um, a, a kind of nonprofit that Service King created to help teammates that are in need. Um, so we've been able to uh, donate monies to a lot of our teammates that um, may be, you know, struggling at this time because uh, one of the, their spouses may have, have lost, um, lost their job. So we're doing things like that to kind of help keep our teammates afloat uh, during this time frame. Yeah, and at CentOS, similar things that uh, Lakitria mentioned, but giving packages to each person's home, uh, family members with we, we provide toilet paper, so we give they, gave them toilet paper that if they needed it. Um, but I think in general, we are, we're doing a lot more sanitization of the actual facilities that every one of our employees work in. We have a, a program that we go in and we sanitize other buildings. And so now on a weekly basis, we're going through and sanitizing our building, sanitizing our trucks and our, making sure our partners feel really safe when they come to work, but then also, we're providing everyone safety masks, the proper equipment, the proper gloves to go out and service the customers and, and make sure that they're safe. A lot of our, we're doing uh, more, obviously with the social distancing rules where our interactions with our customers, we're staying outside and they're having phone calls to say they confirm delivery, things like that. So just making sure that we can, anything that are in our, in our it's great because our frontline partners are really bringing all these ideas to us and how we can help them. So I think in general, our, our partners are really proud that they know that we're keeping them safe. And if they have any concerns whatsoever, we have a COVID-19 response team that they can reach out to directly to answer any questions. And um, so that's just a little bit more on, on what we're doing, but the engagement piece right now is pretty, is pretty um, intense, just in, in communication. I think making sure that they know it's an open communication has been really helpful. I, I agree with that. I mean, communication is really what, what I was gonna, gonna, gonna also talk about at, at Caliber, you know, in, with the volatility and uncertainty of rates and, um, uh, and daily um, changes, um, our CEO is uh, Sanjeev Dazi. He led Citibank for 20 years, and he was actually one of the CEOs that was picked to get us out of the, um, the, the housing crisis a few years ago. So he has a lot of expertise. Caliber is, is a company that's set up to withstand um, times like these, uncertainty and, and downswings in the cycle. And I think that, that really nails it. Communication is really what uh, one of the main things that I see that I, I really, really appreciate, and I think it's spectacular. I mean, we have, uh, and Sundance can speak to this too if I miss something, but we, we have daily um, video communications that come out from our SVP um, that is, uh, you know, um, giving us information that's cascaded down from the executive leadership team that, you know, which is, you know, which is Sanji, our CEO, but he's uh, literally on the phone with the government every morning at seven in the morning. Um, getting intel and, and you know discovering opportunities and, and sharing what you know what caliber you know is, is doing to partner to get to keep people in their homes and to keep that that line um, connected to um, to our customers and borrowers and, and to new customers um, through through what our channel does but but I think that's key is is, is making sure that you know everybody feels comfortable um, in in your, their, our pursuit and what comes next and what's happening today and um, so they can get down to business and get their job done and, and feel, you know, that their, um, that their job is safe and, 
and that we owe them a safe place to work. Yeah, I, I like that all a lot. So not only are we worried about like, you know, clearly we're working from home. So we are, um, you know, worried about physical safety, but that communication you're talking about, the transparency, I think that um, plays into mental health as well. And, and, you know, making sure that everybody has, you know, that knowledge of what's going on in the company. How are, how are we being proactive? What are, what are we doing to, to make sure the jobs are safe? What, what's the future look like? Those are the kinds of things that keep people awake at night, right? How, what's our future look like? So as, as much as we can, we want to be transparent about all of that. And then um, social interaction. So, so we're all missing out on that a lot. So a lot of these, um, you know, Zoom meetings, these kinds of things, we're also doing some that are um, less structured so that they are more like social hours, right? So we'll have a social hour at the end of the day to just kind of like chit chat and, and talk to folks and make sure that we're still staying engaged with um, the people that we otherwise would have been sitting next to, but we can't do that for, you know, obvious reasons now. Well, let me go ahead and move on to the next question. We're hosting our first virtual career fair on Wednesday, the 29th. It's something we kind of dragged our feet on and then this happened and we <laughs> moved forward with it. Um, I think at least half of you are scheduled to attend that as employers. Do you have any suggestions on how students should conduct themselves in this virtual format? Yeah, I mean, I think it's Sunday and I were talking about this earlier. I think um, you know, it's an opportunity that you that you really finally have, which is rare, to control your environment that you're in. Um, you know, making sure that you're obviously dressed professionally and prepared, and you know, you're you're in your you know for once you're in a comfortable uh, what what I hope to be is a comfortable environment for you as a candidate. Um, and um, so, you know, making sure that um, that that's set up that way, you know, to where you're comfortable and put yourself in a position to to have a successful conversation. I would just say, don't be afraid to chat with an employer you're not too familiar with and be open to companies that you may not see a store driving around the road or you're not familiar with their brand and, and take this opportunity to learn more about them, but then also do your research on the front end and see, okay, these companies have the positions that I'm looking for or are still hiring and connect with them. I'm, and then also, I. As an employer, I create a, a few different templates of um, little pitches to each one of my candidates so that I'm not retyping each one of my conversations, like say if it's if we're just chatting about um, the career opportunity. So have some have your 30 second pitch written out, have it prepared, have your why you're the best candidate for the position, things like that. I would say come prepared with some information prior to the career fair. This is an interesting one, um, and campus partners may have a take on this also, but how do you feel uh, a student should address a canceled or a postponed opportunity due to COVID-19 on their resume, and if so, where? So, you know, I got to thinking, like, I have a friend that just got a job at Amazon, and if that had been taken back, that would be a shame, because it's very, a company like that, you can really do a lot for your career that you I gotten hired there. So do you have any thoughts on if that gets rescinded, if you should still notate it, or if it's an internship or what have you? I personally think that I think that that's a fantastic that you get these opportunities. Unfortunately, that it has to be rescinded, but I don't necessarily, I don't want to see that in your resume. I think a cover letter, I think that would be an appropriate place to have that conversation. And then also I think it we're as an employer, we're going to ask you, well, how did you fill your summer during the COVID-19 pandemic? And if you're telling me you were Netflixing and chilling, or you were working at Target trying to fill your time, like that's, I think in the interview process, that's when you can tell me, okay, I had a rescinded offer and, and elaborate on that conversation. So I would say cover letter, at, if you want to write it down in, in, in some format when you're applying, but leave that for the conversation so, so you can have that thorough communication with the employer. Mm -hmm. I think it might depend a little bit on the type of program that you are accepted to. I would think it would be totally acceptable to put that in maybe um, the category of your resume where I would have normally seen like extracurricular activities or maybe even awards or, um, you know, uh, bonus information, right? So, you know, maybe GPA or this award and then accepted to the X, X program. And then I wouldn't need additional information on that unless I asked possibly, right? I don't need to know what happened during that period of time, but it, mostly what I'm looking for is what you were accepted to anyway. The fact that you got accepted is probably 
kudos to you anyway. And that would be an appropriate place for me to see it. What if students do not have access to the technology needed to pivot to online courses or remote internships? I'll, I'll jump in and offer that one of the things that we, we were able to do at the Mayborn School is to make sure that every student who needed technology had access to a laptop. <clears throat> uh, and, and, you know, we have, we have uh, Mac labs where the students get to go edit uh, broadcast video and edit audio and edit down interviews and those sorts of things. So we had to kind of scramble to, to make sure we had uh, various accommodations in, ter in, in terms of software, uh, that everyone had all the software that they needed to, to do those kind of things and <clears throat> whatnot. But uh, at the end of the day, maybe we're, maybe we're a smaller school, I think, than most. So it, we were able to kind of make sure that everybody had access to a laptop or technology. And I would also say from the G. Brent Ryan College of Business, if we had students in our classes or have heard of students that needed technology or didn't have a hotspot or were having trouble, we were able to um, provide them with resources that the university provides. There's hotspots that were able to be checked out. There were laptops that would be able to check out. So we really um, tried just to communicate all the resources that were available to get them up and running as quickly as possible. And we were in a similar situation. Students did have computers made available to them, although very few needed that. It has been noticeable though the last couple of weeks as the traditional end of the semester presentations have been underway, that some students have attempted to do it on their phones and it really is awkward to try to do the share screen aspect of a PowerPoint presentation and still keep track of where you're at and see reactions and all that. So you, you are better off with a, a laptop or some sort of desktop if you're going to be in a course that is obviously going to be online all semester. Where we did run into one interesting challenge was uh, our, our AV equipment. You know, we, we maintain an equipment room full of cameras and video things that our photojournalism students use and broadcast students use. And I'm not sure exactly what the final configuration of, of the solution was, but our technology uh, manager was able to kind of create some sort of a system where students still have had access to those things at, at specific times and in a, in a very coordinated and safe way. All right, thanks for the feedback. Um, what can students do if their internship has been canceled and it is required for their major, or perhaps if they were planning to use it to earn course credit? I can jump in on that from the G. Brent Ryan College of Business. We have an ad hoc committee um, that actually meets on these topics of what would an internship look like now that we've had obviously had several that um, have been suspended during this. And um, as a committee and as a college, we came up with alternative plans for them to be able to still get credit, especially since most of them had done over half the hours already, if not really close to almost all the hours needed anyway. Um, so we have been really diligent in trying to make sure that we communicate to all the students just to let us know where you're at and we'll tell you what you need to do to continue to get credit for this experience. April, could you maybe give us a couple quick examples of some things that students have been able to do that the committee has suggested? I know we have at least one person from a different university that's sitting in on this as kind of like a fact finding thing or a way to get more info. So if, if there were any examples you could share, that would be really helpful. Absolutely. We have um, allowed them to um, take a look at how COVID-19 affected their internship situation and you know, basically report out on that. Like, what, what did you see the organization do up until this point to um, make accommodations and deal with the situation as a business model? And how did, how did the company's business model change for, for COVID-19? And what did they do in order to maintain their business model and change it? And then the students can report back you know, report out how, how that has happened. And then, you know, obviously some of them are reporting, they, there was a structure change, they lost their internship, but really reporting how um, they saw business models change because of the reaction to what's going on, um, which has really been interesting because they've, they've been looking at it from a strategy perspective. Many of our valued partners have been able to convert to remote work for our students. It, it came at a good time of the semester where in most instances they, had already had a face-to-face -face introduction and had been integrated into the workspace. So they made a pretty seamless transition to remote work. A lot of our emergency management students are engaged in updates of plans and sometimes uh, grant program administration and things that can be done from a distance. And the other aspect too with emergency management is where the host agency may be almost entirely immersed in COVID-19 response at this time 
There are other emergency management demands that go on that still need attention. You know, real life tomorrow, there is a tornado threat in the region and hurricane season starts June 1st. And there are deadlines for updates of plans that are on a rotating five-year cycle that are always popping up. So while the, the boss may be busy running from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting about COVID-19, in many instances, our interns have been able to focus on the rest of the operation that's still pretty critical. Yeah, something to also say about that is that we've noticed with our um, interns in the Ryan College of Business is that they might have changed their focus. So they, their internship may not be what it looked like in the beginning of the semester, but they we were able to you know work with the employer to kind of change what the focus was so that it could still meet a business need um, and still give the student credit you know for an experience so that's also worked out very well um, we've also seen special projects come about because um, of this that some of the students have been working on with the employer that were very different than obviously what their internship started with but it was able to really still um, continue that relationship with the employer so those are a couple of other things that have happened as well how do students start a conversation with their potential employer if they're unsure of the status of their internship I think uh, without without knowing that an internship has been canceled, one must assume that it's going to be moving forward. And so I think it's a healthy conversation for a for a student to have to just call and say, "Hey, uh, under the under the present circumstances, how are we going to do this?" You know, uh, just kind of assume that everything's going to be moving forward and, um, until you hear otherwise. You know, we had to postpone our internship because we had so many of our operations that we had to temporarily. Um, close. So we postponed it to either the fall or the spring semester um, for our interns. So, um, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree that, you know, typically if we have offered an internship, we have a pretty good relationship with that individual. And we obviously have the interest of welcoming them onto our team and they have the interest of joining our team. So um, I think a, a simple email or phone call to just, you know, get an update. I mean, hopefully the employers are communicating, you know, we tried to communicate on a weekly basis while we were going through the process of determining whether or not we were going to be able to have a summer internship. And then um, I communicated to them the second that we decided that it just, we weren't going to be able to offer them the experience that we had promised them in the interview process. And we'd rather offer it to them when we can fulfill um, that promise. And that's why we suspended it to the fall or the spring based on, you know, whatever their coursework looks like. And, you know, for us, we have the luxury of being everywhere. So, you know, for those students, we have a lot of students who are planning to be in Dallas for the summer, but they go to school in Oklahoma or they go to school in Arkansas, or we have a UNT student who was going back home to Alabama. Alabama for the summer and they were going to do the internship there. Well, now hopefully they can just do it close to campus um, back in wherever it is that they go to school. So that's the value of having as many operations as we have. We have a little bit more flexibility, but you know, to your original question, I think it's just a matter of reaching out. No employer is going to be upset with a student calling or emailing to ask about the status of their internship. If anything, it's showing their interest, their continued engagement. Um, and that's somebody that we want on our team, not just temporarily, but hopefully long-term post-graduation. One of the next questions, and you kind of answered it, was how can students stay connected to employers at this time? Because they're so used to seeing them on campus, using the interview suites and going to events. And now it's like, how do I contact them? So do y'all have any additional feedback or pretty much just what Jade said in terms of you're not bothering us? Yeah, I agree with Jade. I think that it's about engagement. I mean, it, it doesn't, it, from, from, from a recruitment perspective, I'm not going to be bothered with, um, you know, uh, by a candidate or a student that is, um, you know, well, two things. Number one, reaching out to get an update on what's going on because we're all trying to keep each other warm through the process. It goes both ways. Um, but I think it doesn't always, you know, I wouldn't always feel pressure to have to get an update from an employer. I mean, sometimes it's just as much as checking in and um, say, you know, uh, giving an update on what's going on with you, you know, um, and developing that relationship with the recruiter or with the business and driving that engagement. I think that's just as important as, um, uh, you know, as asking for an update. Because, I mean, you know, if you just asked for an update last month, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to every two or three weeks pop in and say, hey, can I get an update? You can just pop in and say hello and give an update on what's going on with you, especially in these, in these times, because we want to know that you're okay. We want to know how that trip, well, you know, or well, I couldn't say that trip was because we're not going on any trips, but how that family member's doing or something like that. 
Yeah, Something else that we found on the engagement piece with the employers that has been really helpful over these last several weeks is that the employers have been great about still wanting to be engaged with the students in the classroom setting. So we've just moved it to a Zoom like setting like this and employers have really been open to, you know, communicating with the students, talking with them about, you know, what's going on right now. And I feel like that has really helped the students understand that it's okay to talk to each employer and that the employers are just looking at a new way to connect just like we are with them. So I want to thank all of the employers who have done that. It's really helped the students. We've got a great feedback on that. And I was going to mention a little bit about the Zoom presentations. I have done a few with UNT and they, the people that are commenting, like, welcome, Holly. Thank you for your time. Questions. I'm remembering those names of the people that are engaged on a virtual setting. And have a nice picture of yourself on the Zoom meeting. So it's not just your name. It's, I can relate you now to a, a human being. And then we can connect on LinkedIn and we can continue that relationship. So I think those Zoom meetings don't, please, don't let your video be on while you're laying in bed and then you turn your video off. I had a few of those and you know it is what it is, but there's certain ways right now you're building your brand uh, virtually. So just keep that in mind. How would you say, if you have any thoughts on uh, students taking a job outside of their field, like I always, even before this, tried to stress to students, I mean, my bachelor's was in journalism. I didn't end up doing anything with journalism. So I think being flexible is important, but do you have any feedback for them on maybe having to take lower pay and or having a gap of employment, um, but also looking outside of their field to get something for the time being? Yeah, so this is Lakitria. Um, I would definitely say that students, um, even before COVID-19, um, need to stay flexible and, and open. Um, my major was uh, in psychology. And I went into retail management initially uh, on the operation side. So leading teams and all of that good stuff. And then I eventually segued back into uh, HR and recruiting and assessing talent. So I, I, it was kind of like full circle for me, but it was great because I got exposure in different um, uh, industries, which allowed me to gain more experience uh, to make me more versatile and more attractive to employers um, as I continue to progress through my career. So I would definitely say they stay open uh, to those opportunities because you never know where that could land uh, you, um, you know, as far as your, your future goals and, and what you're seeking. Um, so that's just a little bit of uh, personal experience for myself and, and how it's played out over the years. But definitely stay flexible, stay open. Um, and I think um, uh, Holly mentioned it, you know, keep your network large. Uh, don't narrow your scope uh, in regards to who you're reaching out to because that person may know someone else that can help you connect to the right person. So it's really about keeping uh, your options open and continuing to network uh, with those employers. Similar theme that we encouraged our students to use internships as an opportunity to fill a blind spot in their resume. Students tend to take the path of least resistance and follow only those topics that they're most familiar with. And if they get out of their comfort zone a little bit and seek new opportunities, sometimes they find a whole new niche of that career that they want to pursue. And at very least, it will make themselves more marketable in the future where their resume can highlight a, a skill and an aspect that hadn't been part of what they were able to do in the past. So it, by all means, I, I would not see it at all a negative of people were to go off on the edges of what the traditional definition of that career field was and to, to show that kind of versatility. I think you hinted at it a moment ago too, of just showing your ability to conduct a, a Zoom meeting and to ha have a visual presence, a video presence is a two month old skill now. And if you can show that, you're, I would imagine you'd be very v valuable in the workplace. And I'll agree with what Ron and Lakitri both said. <clears throat> I mean, if we're doing our, our jobs right at the, at the Mayborn School of Journalism, we're producing uh, people who are good at storytelling and that, that can translate into almost any field. And, you know, we have, I think we did a thing last year where we discovered that we had journalists, uh, our alumni working in more than 50 different fields. So, you know, we teach people to critically think, we teach people to communicate, we teach people to, to frame up stories and tell stories, which is a massively uh, in-demand thing right now. So, uh, you know, uh, from where we sit, it's job number one is to get job number one. 
you know, get out there and, and then figure out where you go from there. Cause it's just a wild and wacky world. If you're a, a good communicator and a good writer and a good storyteller. Amy, I was just going to add one thing, you know, I think for students who have maybe a, an industry in mind that they want to join or they have a company that they're very passionate about, maybe they've met one of us on campus and they've really connected and they definitely have the interest in joining our team long term to be open minded about what position they start in in that company or in that industry um, can really help in times like this um, you know maybe in a company they're not going to be hiring for a professional management training program right away but maybe they will be in six months but right now maybe you can join the team as an intern or as a frontline type of employee in that business you know just to kind of get your foot in the door and start building your network and building your brand within that organization so I think it's important to be flexible and you know open to different industries and different companies but if they do have their mindset in one particular type of industry or type of company that you know when speaking to the recruiter or when trying to apply for a job that doesn't necessarily exist today you know reaching out to that recruiter and saying hey I understand this is the position I really want but do you have anything else open right now that maybe I would qualify for um, you know at least to open their their communication and their network within that company or that industry. And, and in, in many cases, I think thinking broadly is the safer play than, than just staying focused on the thing I've always wanted to do my whole life. I mean, you guys are all <clears throat> familiar with what's happening in newsrooms right now. I mean, the, the pressures on papers are ginormous in newsrooms, whatever. But so if someone has been uh, on the North Texas Daily for a couple of years and has their, their mindset on going into a newsroom, that may not happen right now. But uh, man, all around the Metroplex, there's... 200 or more fortune 500 companies here who need digital natives who can help them you know populate their social media feeds and create content and so there are a million ways to to still be doing journalism that are still journalism and would still look perfectly appropriate on a timeline and a resume but may not be going directly to that big newsroom i think a lot of us are wondering um even in the career center or just unt if in the future when when this is over quote unquote if we will work remotely more you know have it integrated into our jobs do you think there'll be uh, more opportunities for students or will future employees to work remotely or virtually more so than before yes i, I definitely think so we just had a meeting with our um CEO, uh, I think it was on Friday, and he literally said, you know, um, things have changed. You know, the way we worked a week ago or a month ago or, you know, two years ago is going to be completely different now. We're, we're going to be more open to having um, opportunities where folks are working more remote. Even when this is so-called over, uh, they're still going to take um, precautions as far as maybe there are certain days of the week certain people are coming in the office and and vice versa people are working from home so they're looking right now service king is, is you know how do we continue to uh leverage this and and make it a win-win for everybody so quite honestly i think you're going to see it a little bit more um it'll be the, the new normal uh, to have opportunities to work remote whereas the, your traditional companies were all about you know being in the office and you know uh, working with the team nine to five um, now they're starting to look at it a little bit differently at least at service king uh, to where that working from remote and the productivity is still um, you know high so they're, they're seeing that as well so i think those are some things that have allowed us to to really view working remotely in a, in a different light I agree. And I think there's a couple of things that when you talk about shifting to a, a remote model uh, in so many different you know, categories, there's a couple of things that start developing. Number one is, is how you measure the effectiveness of a remote employee, I think is going to start um, becoming uh, the new normal, like she said. And then also, um, how are you training, right? I mean, are you uh, Caliber is offering virtual training now and we're really so next Monday, I have 30 loan officers starting. And this is going to be the first class that we've done all virtual training. Um, and it's going to be really interesting. But, you know, we have one class a month for loan officers. And our last class in April, April 6th or April 4th, I can't remember which date, whatever that first Monday in April, we pushed it. I mean, we didn't have an April class. So we could spend 30 days developing our virtual training. So now we're going to see how this performs. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think our company has always said, you know, we're not against 
remote opportunities. We just haven't found a way to make it work yet. Well, well that's changing, right? So it's gonna be interesting. But for us at Enterprise, I think, you know, it it has definitely opened our eyes to um, the opportunity for some folks to work remote and to be able to still connect virtually, um, at least for a lot of our administrative positions. But obviously, the, the majority of our work is customer facing and, you know, delivering customer service and physically delivering cars um, and pickup trucks and selling cars. And a lot of those things are going to have to, you know, remain as they were. Um, but, you know, I think Lakitra said it best. There, there's a lot of different avenues of the business where we were just like, this is how it's always been done for 63 years. We have to get together and have a meeting about this particular thing. Um, and so I do think that for some of our, you know, conservative companies that have, you know, been, um, really, really loyal to some of the processes we've had. This has definitely opened our eyes. And I think that this is an aspect of the workforce that our incoming um, new employees that are graduating from college are really attracted to. And, you know, I think that it has existed in the IT worlds and some of the financial worlds, but for some of us, it hasn't really existed. So I think, you know, that as we start to see this really continue to evolve and for all of us to get better and better at it. Um, it is going to give our companies more confidence that some of this can be done and continue to be done um, the way that we've been doing it for two months. How do you feel that students can be better prepared once normal hiring resumes and are there any resources to help them with, with this? And, and I would say not just for hiring, but how, how can we go back to how things are in the classroom? From, from my perspective, spend this time developing you as a person and read some books, read, listen to some new podcasts, really make you the best version of you in these different times. And so whatever, and, and again, join in on conversations like the Career Center is putting on right now. And, and don't be afraid to step into uh, some situations that may be a little bit uncomfortable, but it'll make you better in the long term. And you'll have things to fill up that resume. And that's ultimately what I'm looking for. I'm looking how you, how do you spend your time outside of class? And uh, I think just really working on your mental health as Sundance said earlier, but understanding that employers were in this also. So we're in this together and we're all navigating through uncharted territories. And just, if you need anyone connect with the career center and they have a ton of employers like us that can give you feedback or can connect with you and help be a mentor through this situation. So don't be afraid to reach out. There's nothing better than just a quick, quick email chain conversation. And then we can set up a Zoom call. So don't be afraid to think outside of the box. Yeah, I agree with Holly wholeheartedly, you know, and I was talking to a student earlier that, or last week and I said, you know, this is the time to connect with recruiters because a lot of them aren't doing a lot of hiring, you know, we might be doing some, but, you know, there are obviously some industries like obviously Caliber over there, but that's doing a lot of hiring, but for the most part, a lot are, are at least slowed down or on a temporary freeze. So I have time right now, you know, if the student wants to have a, a virtual mock interview, I've got the time. If they want to send me their resume, I've got the time. And I, that's what we love to do. This is what we're passionate about. It's about, you know, developing and supporting students as they find their career path. So I agree with whole heart, Holly completely that this is the time to, you know, try to connect via LinkedIn or via email to anybody that they engage with in a setting like this or on campus. Um, but also there's a ton of opportunities for professional development right now that are being offered for free. So I saw yesterday, Steve Harvey shared it on Instagram, but um, Microsoft was offering their three month um, Excel you know, guru session for free. And it's usually like a $600 session. And so you can take the session for free right now and it's completely free. And then you can add that to your resume. And so, you know, I think, you know, to the, to your point, Amy, your question is like, how do students navigate that question when they start interviewing and someone says, so what did you do in the 60 days or 90 days that the America was shut down? Um, you want to have a good response to that. I think there's a ton of volunteer organizations you can be involved with even remotely or virtually. You know, some of the student orgs on campus are doing things to connect with the community. I think this is the time to really 
kind of try to exhaust all options to connect with people, even if it's only virtually, um, so that you can stand out from the crowd when it's time to um, be applying for a position or a leadership position on campus. I'll echo all of that. I think uh, something, Holly, I think you said about not being in fear right now and, and uh, this, use this opportunity for professional development. I was uh, chatting with a student uh, last week who was set to head off to Washington to work for one of the major media in an internship this summer and, and that got put on hold. And uh, he, he, was, uh, he volunteered to me, he said, but how many stories are out there right now that I can go report on? And even if I don't get paid for them, I can get them placed and that way I'll have clippings in my, in my portfolio. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, it's just looking for, it, instead of what you thought you were going to do, look and you know, find out what you can do. And that's just continue to perfect your skills and keep doing what we do. And I think, I think once the snow glows, globe settles down and all of this is into whatever new normal, what we're all going to see. I mean, um, uh, corporations are out there looking, looking at this as an opportunity for a massive level set. Uh, everyone gets an opportunity to sort of use this as a way to rethink, you know, who am I, what do I do, who do I do it for, how do I do it in a, in a different or unique way, and, and where can my future be moving forward, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's an opportunity as, as much as it is a challenge.